We move now to Ms. Danielle Walwyn, Advocacy Officer at the Healthy Caribbean Coalition, and she'll be talking to us about the industry response to COVID-19. Let's hear about the commercial determinants. Danielle. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for the introduction. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to discuss industry interference. The industry has been very, very busy during COVID and across the world. Um, so we actually saw this in a report, Prof alluded to it, Sir Trevor alluded to it earlier this morning. The Global Health Advocacy Incubator released this report facing two pandemics. And so I'd encourage you to have a read. It highlights that, you know, this is not something that's just happening in the region, it is happening worldwide. And so the truth is, is that the, the industry has taken advantage of COVID realities, for example, food insecurity, the fact that we're online more now than ever. And some of these actions really do have consequences and they're harmful to health. And so this morning, I'm, we, I mean, we have a number of industry actions, but I'm only going to be focusing on a few. And again, these were uh, unhealthy food donations, marketing to children, and interference in the front of package labeling standards process that has been facilitated by CrossQ. I'll kind of discuss, you know, what do we need to do to ensure that this doesn't happen again? Because honestly, a lot of these opportunities have resulted in brand visibility, brand loyalty, and a lot of it has been in the name of prioritizing profit. Next slide, please. So the Healthy Caribbean Coalition tracks the major food, bev, alcohol actors across the region and we have seen a drastic increase in the number of donations of products and a lot of those products are processed, high in salt, sugar and fat and these donations have been to vulnerable populations including those living with NCDs and children. And some of these donations included fast food as well, a lot of them were branded. And so I'd like to introduce you to Mrs. Henry. Mrs. Henry lost her job as a result of COVID. She's hypertensive. She's highly dependent on these donations. So you can see where the dilemma is. So again, these donations, short-term, long-term, can be harmful to health and worse than a condition. Next slide, please. Thanks, Chris. The other issue, marketing to children. And most of this has happened on screen because let's be honest, a lot of us are on screen now more than ever before. But some of these donations have been happening in schools as well because we've seen that students have returned back to school. And one that really caught our eye was an alcohol, alcohol sanitizers. It was a branded, um, branded alcohol sanitizers to children in Trinidad. So that one really caught us. And the industry, as I said before, has taken advantage of the fact that we are on our screens. They are communicating to us, all of us, whether it's through stay, stay safe messaging or otherwise, and of great concern is their communication to children. They are providing tips and tricks for children to really conquer learning at home. They're providing activities for children to do, and they're using them as branding opportunities. Some industry actors have taken a step even further and they've actually used brand ambassadors, child influencers. So, so no longer are the messages coming from adult to child, but it's from child to child. And you know, we are getting into some dangerous territory here. And so I'd like to introduce you to Abigail. So Abigail is in grade four. Her friends and herself have been doing a lot of activities that reference, um, that are resources from these industry and um, you know they're enjoying it they're having lots of fun and unfortunately uh, Abigail her father Mark has seen that they she's been really enjoying these activities and he also noticed that this particular beverage that's being featured on the activity is high is uh, is high in vitamin C but Mark is totally also forgetting that it's also high in sugar and so again, this is another reality, a child really, really enjoying a particular resource and this deceptive marketing piece as well. And so why is this an issue? We know that marketing can influence children's preferences as it increases their awareness, recognition and recall of brands. Repeated exposure leads to positive brand associations and preferences. So their increased presence online is harmful. So essentially, they, what are they doing? They are creating lifelong brand customers. So again, these tactics are being used worldwide. 
Predatory marketing was highlighted as a great threat to children's health by WHO, Lancet, UNICEF report on a future for the world's children in February 2020. In a follow-up commentary, they said that COVID-19 has exacerbated these threats. Marketing, um, for example, marketing to children. And on the flip side, most recently, the UK has proposed a ban online, to online junk food advertising in an attempt to tackle childhood, the childhood obesity epidemic. So we know that the alarm has been raised and we're gonna continue to leverage this sort of information in our advocacy work. Next slide, please. The last action that I'll highlight today is the industry's interference in the front of package labeling. So front of package labeling is a, is a labeling system that allows persons to quickly, easy, and correctly identify critical nutrients in their foods and really help people make informed choices. So currently, consultations on the FOPL system are ongoing in CARICOM territories. There's a mayor committee in each CARICOM territory and the industry sits on these mayor committees. However, again, the industry has interfered and halted this FOPL process. How have they done this? having a lot of closed door conversations, questioning scientific evidence and revisiting arguments that have already been addressed again to delay the process. And what has resulted, the tactics have has resulted in a watered down standard that is no longer mandatory. So again, prioritizing profit over public health. Next slide, please. And so what is it that we want? As this webinar is rightly titled, People Over Profits, Health Over Profits. And you know, this is gonna require the work of multiple actors. So private sector, especially those outside of unhealthy food and bev, should continue to increase their support of health-related initiatives and really abide by strong regulations imposed by government. We're asking governments to implement strong conflict of interest policies and strengthen accountability mechanisms Really, we need a transparent process. Civil society, we need to continue to execute our watchdog role to monitor and call out conflict of interest and industry threats. And again, to address that unhealthy food, those unhealthy food donations, we need food donation protocols to govern and guide food donations during and outside times of crisis. Last slide, please. Thanks, Chris. So these people have a right to access healthy food and not be bombarded with unhealthy products. They deserve to have their health prioritized. We deserve to have our health prioritized. There's no doubt that the landscape has changed and the industry has shown that if appropriately motivated, they can take action. We need really this multi-sectoral effort and as civil society, we need to continue to advocate for this.